For anyone new to Football Manager, picking the tactic that you want to play when you arrive at a club for the first time is one of the most important things to get right and also one of the easiest things to get wrong. So in this video, I'm going to take you through step by step the process I go through when arriving at a new club to decide what tactic we're going to use. Hello folks, welcome along to a tactics video. I bet you never thought you'd see a tactics video on my channel if you've been around for a while. I am certainly not one of the football manager button clickers. I am not known for constantly tweaking and changing my tactics. I'm very much a set it, then forget it kind of manager. But in order to do set it, then forget it football manager tactics, you have to make sure you're setting it correctly in the first place. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you uh, the process that I go through when I arrive at a new club, it just so happens I've just arrived at a new club in my main save, non to Legend, which comes out Monday to Friday at four o'clock here on YouTube. We've just left Tottenham, having won the Champions League, to join Barcelona, an ageing Barcelona, where we need to decide what we're going to do tactically so that we can then plan our transfers around that and obviously get ourselves ready for the start of the new season. So if you are new, make sure you subscribe, turn your notifications on to see how this turns out because over the next few days in those four o'clock videos, you'll see how this tactic gets on in the main series as we progress with our life with Barcelona. And of course, if this kind of video appeals to you, if you want to see more of this kind of thing, make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Let me know that you want to see more tactic stuff and more in-depth looks at how I actually play Football Manager because I feel like I play it a little bit differently to a lot of the other content creator kind of chaps and possibly a little bit more similarly to how your typical average Football Manager player plays, maybe. Ooh, controversial Kev. Should we jump in and have a look to see uh, to see what we actually do? So this is literally, as I've arrived at Barcelona, uh, we're going to figure out what we're going to do tactically. I haven't looked at the squad yet. I haven't really done anything yet. The first thing I'm going to do is have a look at the club vision because club vision is going to give me a clue because it's all well and good coming up with your all singing, all dancing tactic that you downloaded off of whatever website you downloaded it off of. But if it means you're going to be playing football completely differently to how your board and your fans want you to play, you're just creating problems for yourself going forward because if the tactic then doesn't work, you're going to get a lot less leeway with the board if you've tried to prove them wrong and then it doesn't work. If it wins, it wins and you're probably going to be fine and you don't need to worry. But on the assumption that we're not just going to win every game from the word go, no matter what we use, we should probably make sure we're working in tandem with the board, the fans, the club culture. We're at Barcelona. We want to play the Barcelona way. So in this 2030 version of the universe, what is the Barcelona way? The board, they're saying they want us to play possession football and make the most of set pieces. And from the supporters, we get a little bit more information. They want attacking, entertaining possession football. Um, they want us to play high tempo pressing football and again, make the most of set pieces. So set pieces are definitely going to be important. Possession is definitely important. And obviously we want to be looking to be attacking, entertaining, high tempo, pressing that all helps because when you look at this tactic screen, that's already starting to rule out some tactics that might not work. For example, control possession, patiently waiting for openings. I mean, it's going to do us to possession stuff, but maybe not the, the high tempo pressing stuff that the uh, the fans are looking for. Gagan Press has the high tempo uh, pressing elements, but maybe not the possession stuff that the board are looking for. So we're immediately kind of leaning towards the tiki tacker the vertical tiki tacker which actually are the ones that the staff member, my assistant manager, recommends that our players are quite well suited to these two as well. So we're already looking very much at tiki tacker and vertical tiki tacker The board are also suggesting, sorry, the assistant manager is also suggesting fluid counter-attack. I'm pretty comfortable ruling that one out because it's not possession-based. It's not high tempo. So we're probably going to rule that out. The fans and the board aren't going to like that. But I think we're looking at tiki tacker and vertical tiki tacker So we'll keep that at the back of our mind. And now we're going to have a look at the squad and see who our best players are and what their best positions are. Because again, if we, find, if we come in and find out we've got a load of really great wingers, we're probably going to want to play a system with wingers. If we've got the best defensive midfielder in the world, we probably want to play a system that has a defensive midfielder. Three great centre-backs, you probably want... You get the idea. So looking at who the best players are here at Barcelona in 2030, uh, the two best by quite a long way are both central midfielders, Gavi 
and Pedri. Gavi is a natural central midfielder who can also play as a holding midfielder or an attacking midfielder. He can also play out wide on that right-hand side as well, but really wants to be in central midfield in a playmaker role. And then we look at Pedri. Pedri, very similar in central midfield, can't play any deeper, um, but can play or wants to play those playmaker roles in central midfield as well. Could also do a similar job in an attacking midfield position or likewise could potentially drift out onto either wing as well. But we're looking potentially at two central midfield playmakers, which is interesting, but might work with a tiki tacker. If we then go further down, our players, our third best player. So we're looking at these next three, really. Next three, in fact, next four or five, who are all the four stars. So there are two five-star players. And then you go all the way down to Frankie de Jong for who our four-star players are. And these these are the guys we're building this system around. So Ferran Torres uh, can play up front, but he's not as good as he is out wide. So his best position is on the left wing. Second best, three and a half star on the right wing. Third best position is up front. So we want Ferran Torres as our third best player in his best position. So left wing, straight away, probably going to play a system that involves wingers then so that we can fit Ferran Torres in, especially when we see we've also got Ansu Fati, who very similarly um, can play up front or on either wing. He's actually a four-star player in any of those positions, so we could end up using him as a striker, but potentially put him out on the right-hand side. Torres on the left, Fati on the right. We're starting to see a shape of a formation start to emerge. We've also got Ronald Araujo, who as a centre-back wants to be a ball-playing centre-back, so again, feeding into that whole possession-based ball-playing kind of system. So uh, that in itself, having one centre-back doesn't tell us massively anything about what we want to do tactics-wise. Um, but if we have a look, have we got another centre-back? We've got Jules Koundé, um, who can play centre-back, can play right-back. Uh, so we've got an out-and-out right-back that can't really play as a wing-back. That leans us towards a back four. But then you look at Alejandro Balde, um, who's a left-back, who's also a natural wing-back, which could in turn lean us towards a back three because he could potentially play a little bit further forward. But we don't really have a third centre-back. Frankie de Jong can play there, but he's definitely at his best as a deep-lying playmaker, either in central midfield or defensive midfield. So I think we're probably looking at a back four. Um, Kunde could potentially be the right-back or a centre-back in that. Araujo would be another centre-back. You've then got Balde at left-back. Uh, Fatty on one wing, Terra, uh, Ferran Torres on the other, and then a central midfield three of Frankie de Jong, Gavi and Pedri. So that could potentially, and there's a couple of different ways that could look um, if we go into Tiki Taka um, as the first one. Because so we're looking at both of these tactics. But if we were to look at Tiki Taka, um, we could potentially do a 4-3-3 and put de Jong there and then have Gavi and Pedri. Or you could do something more along these lines where you'd have to push the two DMs further forward. I guess you could play De Jong and Gavi as defensive midfield players, but you'd probably push them a little bit further forward and then have Pedri playing a little bit further on. My assistant manager, though, is recommending the 4-3-3. It's one of the ones that we've kind of identified might work anyway. So let's have a look at this in a little bit more detail. We've got our, we've got our preset version of it. So this is theoretically how Football Manager thinks it will best suit the player's that we've got, and we can start plugging a few players in and seeing who will fit where. So we've all, we already know we've got uh, Gavi and Pedri. Pedri's the slightly more attacking of the two, so we can put Gavi and Pedri and have him as a slightly more attacking of the two. And then you've got Frankie de Jong, who is very comfortable playing there. So all three of these want to be playmakers, which does set off a few alarm bells for me. I tend to have a personal rule of not playing more than one playmaker in a system, but then I don't normally play tiki-taka kind of systems. And I don't normally have this quality of central midfielder available to me. Having these three absolutely on top of their game, playing in positions that suit them. The, I mean, this this could work really well. De Jong sitting a little bit deeper, obviously Pedri pushing on up into these spaces here and Gavi just kind of floating around wherever he wants. I think we're going to control a lot of possession in that central midfield, which is obviously something that the uh, that the board and the fans are looking for us to do. But we probably do need to be mindful that there's not going to be as much of that high-intensity pressing out of these three playing in these roles. So we need to bear that in mind when looking to fill the, the other positions around that midfield three. So if we have a look at who else we had, we know we had Ferran Torres for the left-hand side and then Fatty could potentially play out there or he could play 
as the striker in that system. Um, and then we know we had Balde, who can play there as an attacking left-back option. We've got Kunde, um, who can play on that side. And then I think we had Araujo as a ball-playing defender, isn't he? So we'll just slot him in there. And we've already got a team that's starting to take shape. Not only a team that's starting to take shape, but a transfer policy starting to emerge as well. Because picking those best players and putting them all in their best positions, we haven't yet put them in roles that suit them. So let's just have a look at who's who's better at what roles. Um, so Torres, slightly better as an inverted winger than an inside forward. I think he'd be quite happy playing either of those. He is a right footer playing on the left-hand side. So... I'd probably be inclined to play him as an inside forward on that side. And then Fatty over here is a right winger playing on the right-hand side. So you could play him as a winger. Um, I want him to cut inside a little bit more. So I think we might make him an inverted winger and actually ask him to push on and get a little bit more attacking um, with Pedri pushing on, attacking on this side. And I'm thinking in terms of Balde, we probably want him as a real attacking version, pushing on beyond Torres. So we want an attacking player on each flank so we'll have an attacking wing back and a supporting wide player in here we'll have the attacking wide player and a supporting wing back who's a little bit more defensive minded in the shape of Kunde who ultimately might end up coming over and playing at centre back for us anyway so that then leaves us with uh, a few players that we'd either need to plug from plug gaps from players we've got in the squad or go out and spend some money so looking at what we've got in terms of strikers there really isn't a huge amount knocking around the place. So that suggests striker might be a top priority unless we put Fatty up front and see, right, well, if we got anyone who can play on this, right? And so we've still got Usmani Dembele knocking around the club. So he could potentially uh, come in and play on this right-hand side. He's either footed. He can do that inverted winger role. Um, and then we look at Ansu Fatty as a striker. What would he be good at doing? He kind of wants to uh, push forward in that advanced forward role uh, so we could make him a little bit more attacking and have these three really running around. You're going to get that high-intensity, um, fast-paced play, uh, the high-pressing style from these three as a front three. So you could potentially put those three in in that kind of shape. You have to be a little bit wary with your advanced forward, with your lone centre-forward playing as an advanced forward on attack. There's the potential for them to be a little bit isolated. That's why you want Dembele uh, coming in on an attacking instruction. Pedri getting up into these areas as well. You don't want to leave everybody... Um, hiding back in midfield. And like I say, you can easily switch this in match to that if you find that Fatty is getting a little bit more isolated. I think potentially playing an advanced forward on attack might suit the 4-2-3-1 even more. This is probably another tactic we'll have um, that we'll experiment with because that might prevent Fatty from getting more isolated. Whereas if you were playing more of a complete forward or a deep lying forward up there, there's more of an argument if you're going to be playing, say, a complete forward on support that you play everyone a little bit deeper, let the wide players run beyond the centre forward um, and give this space here for the centre forward and Pedri to kind of control in their own way. But we'll leave it as that for now and see how it works in the match engine. And again, you look at what you've got in terms of, have we got another centre back? Not really. So if we move Kunde over, have we got another right back? We have, we can stick this guy in who... Those who've been watching the series will know from my Tottenham save can come in and play there at right back. So that fills that gap. And then goalkeeper, just stick anyone in. And I think we'll probably, because we're a little bit weak in goal, we will probably play him on a more defensive instruction. I don't really want a sweeper keeper on attack, but he's probably the weakest player in the team. And it will be a priority for transfers for this team. So we've now got an 11 playing in a shape that seems to work for the key players. Obviously the best players are really this kind of this kind of section of attacking players in here, and then we just need to make sure that the uh, the system itself is suiting what we want to be doing. Um, it's up to you whether you want to put the play for set pieces on. I tend to leave it off because even though the board are asking for it, I think we'll once we do our set piece instructions. There is a video on corner instructions. I'll link to down below. Once we've got our corner instructions set up, I think we'll score enough from set pieces for it to look like we're focusing on them without us having to. And I don't really want a team that's all about possession and playing attractive, attacking, possession-based football. I don't necessarily want them to be focused on trying to win corners and free kicks on the edge of the area. So we'll probably leave that off. Um, we, but there's other bits on here that we could tweak and we could potentially go to a little bit of a higher tempo because if we have a look at what the supporters wanted, 
Uh, they wanted high tempo pressing football. So maybe we we look to move away from low tempo football. I think actually with that in mind, I think the vertical tiki tiki taka is a slightly higher tempo. Yeah, so that's a slightly higher tempo anyway. So we could maybe move that same bunch of players into a system like this. We're obviously going to have to then tweak some of the roles around because we don't want to play Gavi as a box to box midfielder, for example. But you could you could kind of merge elements of the two, go a little bit. Maybe even take it up to uh, a medium tempo and see how it gets on. But it, a lot of it comes down to just keeping an eye on what's going on in those early matches and tweaking things accordingly. But even with just leaving these instructions as they are, I think we've hit, ticked enough of the boxes from what the board and the fans wanted for them to be happy. We've got our best players in the team in their best positions and we've also got an idea of where we need to strengthen. We need to bring in someone who can play up front or on the right wing or maybe both. Uh, we probably don't need to do too much in the uh, centre, central midfield. We've got a lot of very good players in there. Maybe uh, if we were to add something, it would be a different kind of central midfield player. Um, someone who could do that box-to-box -box midfielder role, to just come in there and do a little bit of running for us. Um, we know we need a defender, whether it's a centre-back or a right-back or someone who can cover both. And we know we need a goalkeeper, but it is a very solid system that suits the team philosophy, suits the players that we've got and should be fine. If it ends up that it's not, that's when you can start to tweak stuff. So if we find that we're not creating enough chances, not scoring enough goals, we can try this variant of it. If we find uh, the tempo is too low, you can maybe bring the tempo up a little bit. And that's where the little tweaks and things come with time. But I don't think there's, I don't, I don't think there's any benefit to it right now before we've played a game with this team fiddling around with all these different instructions and trying to micromanage how they do every little thing i think if you stick loosely to one of the tactical styles that are in the game find one that matches what you're trying to do and matches your players i think that will give you a very solid starting point and then give it six games give it 10 games before you start tweaking stuff get an idea of what's working what's not working who's playing well who's not um, which players might not suit the roles you've got them in. And you can then tweak a little bit from there. But like I say, I'm not tweaking loads. And you'll see that process develop over the course of the next few episodes of non to Legend as well, as we get bedded into uh, our time at Barcelona, get used to these players and figure out exactly what we're going to do tactically. So again, if you want to see how this turns out, I urge you to watch those over the coming week or so. But if you have found this video helpful as a way to decide what to do tactically when you first arrive at the club. It, like I say, very simple. Get an idea of what the board and the fans want you to do. Have that in mind when it comes to your tactical style. Then pick your best four, five, six, seven players and make sure they're in their best positions, in their best roles, fit everyone else in around them. You'll come up with a shape off the back of doing that and uh, you won't be a million miles away when you do. So if you found that helpful, please leave a nice big thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments section what other tutorial style or deep dive videos you'd like to see here on the channel. And thank you very much for watching.